Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the management of Dabur India Limited, I welcome you to this conference call pertaining to results for the quarter ended 30th June 2023. Present here with me are Mr. Mohit Malhotra, Chief Executive Officer, Dabur India Limited, Mr. Ankush Jain, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Rahul Lavasti, Global Head of Operations, and Mr. Ashok Jain, EVP Finance and Company Secretary. We'll start with an overview of the company's performance by Mr. Mohit Malhotra, followed by a Q&A session. I now hand over to you, Mohit. Thank you. Thank you, Gagan Madam. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for the results call of, finan of Quarter 1 Financial Aid 24. During Quarter 1 Financial Aid 24, most of the economies witnessed a moderation in inflation. In India, too, inflation showed signs of easing as witnessed in both CPI and WPI data. With this moderation in inflation, there has been an uptick in volumes in both urban and rural markets, indicating promising signs of recovery in demand. In such an environment, I'm pleased to share with you that quarter one, financial aid 24, has been a quarter of strong growth across all geographies. Davos consolidated revenue for the quarter crossed INR 3,000 crore mark to close at 3,130 crores, and registered constant currency growth of 13.3% and INR growth of 11%. India business grew by 8% backed by robust double-digit growth of our healthcare and HPC portfolio. The beverage portfolio got impacted by unseasonal rains in the north and west India. The four-year CAGR for the India business is 10% with near double-digit CAGR in healthcare and HPC and strong double-digit growth in F&B business. International business registered a growth of 20.6% in constant currency terms. Talking about the categories, HPC portfolio recorded a 11% growth during the quarter. Our oral care portfolio grew by 13% in the quarter, leading to strong double-digit four-year CAGR. Dabur Red gained 50 basis points of market share in the category, consolidating our position as a number two player in the oral care segment, with every second household being a Dabur oral care household. Hair oils recorded a 10% growth and posted a strong gain in market shares of 200 basis points to reach its highest ever level of 17.4. Shampoos recorded a 9% growth in the quarter, with four-year CAGR at a robust 13%, leading to market share gains. Home care registered a 15% growth with all the brands witnessing strong performance. O'Donnell, which is number one player in the air freshness category, continued to witness gain in market share. In mosquito repellent category, we saw an uptick of 340 bips in market share. Healthcare portfolio recorded a 10.5% growth, posting a four-year CAGR of 10%. We saw market share gains across health supplement portfolio. Digestive category saw a growth of 15% on back of robust performance of Hajmula franchise. OTC portfolio grew by 24% during the quarter, driven by double-digit growth in Lal Tail and Haritas. Ethical registered a 7% growth in the quarter. We have recently established a therapeutics division, which includes a team of 400 product specialists for advocacy and sales of our healthcare portfolio to allopathic doctors. This division is targeting an incremental business of around 150 crores during the year. With the portfolio of baby care, branded ethical, pure herb, and derma products. With this division, we are targeting to reach 70,000 allopathic doctors in addition to the current coverage of 70,000 Ayurvedic practitioners. This should enable the company to bring Ayurveda into mainstream allopathic healthcare and accelerate growth of our healthcare vertical. There is saw muted growth during the quarter on account of unseasonal rain which particularly impacted North and West India. The foods business under the homemade brand performed exceedingly well with growth of 35%. This has been further bolstered by, uh, by Bacha acquisition, which saw 23% growth in the quarter. We remain on track to exit the year with an rate of 500 crores from our foods plus Bacha business. We continue to drive our distribution expansion initiative. Our direct reach stands at 1.4 million outlets, and we should increase it to 1.5 million by the end of the fiscal year. Village coverage is at strong 1 lakh plus villages, being ably supported by more than 13,000 yodhas. 
ETH score, which is a efficiency marker of distribution, continues to see improvement and has seen an increase of close to 10% in the quarter. Now coming to the international business. With moderation of inflation and distribution changes, the international business has seen a strong recovery and registered a 20.6% constant currency growth. This was driven by robust growth across our region, with Middle East, North Africa growing by 10%, Egypt growing at 45%, Turkey business growing at 52%, and Sub-Sahara business growing by 13%. Our focus on innovation and customer-centric strategies has enabled us to gain market shares across most geographies and countries. A litigation has been filed against one of our subsidiaries, Namaste LLC in USA, along with other companies manufacturing hair relaxer products like L'Oreal, Godrej, Softsheen, Carson, Avalon, Revlon, etc. Where it has been alleged that usage of such hair relaxer products leads to harmful effects. Namaste disputes the same and stands for the safety of its products. Namaste, along with other defendants, have formed a defense consortium and appointed lawyers to take adequate steps to defend this lawsuit. The case has been filed on the basis of an incomplete and inconclusive study. Namaste, along with other defendants, maintains there is no legal merit to this suit. The portfolio in question is less than 1% of a consolidated revenue, and we have a product liability insurance in place. The matter is subjudice. Coming to the quarter's profitability, our consolidated gross margin expanded by 75 bits as material inflation reduced from high single digit to low single digits. During the quarter, we have increased our ANP investments by around 30%. We believe these media investments are essential to drive long-term sustainable growth and maintain our market leadership. This quarter, we recorded a market share gains in 90% of our portfolio. Our operating profit saw a growth of 11.2%. PAT for the quarter touched 464 crores growing by 5.4% over previous year. This includes amortization related to Patshah acquisition. Excluding this amortization impact, the PAT growth was 8% on a like-to-like -like basis. Overall, the improving demand scenario augurs well for the business as we will continue to drive profitable growth across our business verticals backed by investments in our distribution network, brands, manufacturing, digital, and organizational capabilities. With this, I conclude my address and open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Next question is the first question is on the line of Abneesh Roy from Novama Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Abneesh, your line is unmuted. I request you to please proceed with your question. Hello. Hello, yes, Abneesh. Please go ahead. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, my first question is, of course, uh, in Q4, uh, your numbers were weak, and uh, now you have seen good recovery on YOY basis and even on four-year basis. So want to understand on this recovery bit, uh, uh, is it uh, uh, because of the inventory levels changing from Q4 to Q1 in, in any meaningful manner? Uh, second is, of course, 30% increase in the advertising also. So is it across categories because it seems slightly higher than what uh, some of your other peers are doing? Uh, uh, on an absolute basis, the 30% increase, and when seen when seen from a gross margin to a beta margin kind of a translation, it is much higher than uh, the gross margin expansion versus the other companies. So could you elaborate uh, this recovery bit? Uh, is, is that sustainable for the coming quarters also across categories? Hi, Abhinish. Yeah. So I think the recovery is seen in the market per se. It is not just Dabur recovery. We've seen that uh, rural business across the board actually has recovered and there's a volume uptick which is being seen in the rural business. So rural for the category itself or should I say for the FMCG market has actually grown by 4%. We are growing ahead in rural. 
at around 8% and urban growth for us is around uh, 10%. So across all businesses, we have seen the recovery happen as the rural recovers. And you know the Dabur is more salient in rural. So backed by rural, we are seeing a recovery happening in our GT business. In MT, we had some issues in modern trade with Reliance. If we got it out and modern trade is again back on a limb and growing at around 18% for us. E-commerce, there are some teething issues in the business. That is again going to be back on track and uh, e-commerce should by the end of year should be around 9% of our overall sales. So broadly, I'm confident on the recovery of the business. Uh, but for beverages, which got impacted by the seasonal, unseasonal rains which happened and that's dampened the beverage portfolio. But our food portfolio grew by around 34%. So it's a secular uh, kind of a growth that we've seen across the portfolio and uh, not much pertaining to any inventory levels uh, in the market uh, per se. As far as the second part of your question is advertising. Advertising, we had cut back last year uh, advertising because of the inflation issues and we wanted to maintain the margins and that's why there was advertising cut because huge inflation was there. Now inflation is kind of abated in our portfolio. In India, overall inflation was almost around 0.5%. Uh, international business still witnessed some sort of inflation, but uh, we had alluded to earlier also that we will be investing money back into advertising for surging demand, and that's what we've done. And that's why 30% growth in advertising is what we are seeing, and uh, that's what done. And we've also invested some money back from consumer promotion and trade promotion back into advertising. So uh, that's so gross margin improvements are being invested into advertising, and some is flowing down into. EBITDA also operating profit. Sure. My second question is on the health portfolio with this uh, leadership chain from Himalaya, such a senior person. Uh, you have also uh, shared the uh, uh, higher targets for uh, FI24 with higher uh, feet on street, etc. My question here is uh, why now, how easy is it to target the allopathic uh, for Ayurvedic because both are very different. If it was so easy, why did you not try it earlier? And uh, any other learnings, because Himalaya being unlisted, we don't know much, but it's very well run in the health and Ayurvedic uh, segment. You are also very large. Any other learnings are there, uh, apart from what you are doing in terms of feet on street and targeting allopathy, any other changes needed in your own portfolio? Well, there are a couple of changes in the healthcare. One is the leadership change that you know, Philippe has come in and he's the one who's driving the healthcare vertical for us. So I think one major change is advocacy and advocacy not to, also we are doing it to Ayurvedic, but also we've started uh, allopathic also because we see that allopathic uh, doctors are the mainstream, uh, you know, practitioners in the country and without your portfolio getting a yes or a tick uh, from the allopathic, you really can't uh, drive uh, healthcare in a country like India. So therefore we are going to be doing a positive advocacy with allopathic doctors and also driving sales through them. 150 crores of incremental sales, and we put around uh, 500 people feet on street, totally going to both allopathic and uh, Ayurvedic doctors. So this business should be incremental. And moreover, uh, if you remember my previous uh, speeches also, I talked about uh, baby care. We are not taking mainstream and keeping it restricted to e-commerce till the time we establish a GTM for baby care. So with this advocacy team coming in, and going to gynecologists and pediatricians also, baby care will come into mainstream. Baby care, which exited at around 20 crores last year, should see a 50 crore business in the current year. And baby care will be driven uh, very hard through this vertical, along with uh, branded ethicals and also some pharma-led products. So overall, we should continue on a growth trajectory of 10% CAGR on healthcare uh, going forward with Philips coming in. Apart from setting up an advocacy vertical and selling products through this advocacy vertical in allopathic channel, which is not a very big challenge. It's not very difficult because Philippe has done it in the past. We're doing it except that training, etc., has to go on a little slow burn. But I think by end of the year, we should uh, see turnover growth coming from this vertical. The second uh, vector of growth in healthcare will be uh, investing money on power brands, which we'll continue to do. Uh, backing up uh, Lalsdale, Hanitas, Pudin Hara, uh, all these brands and Chavan Prash and Honey, etc. That will go on the way the strategy was. The third vector is new product introductions to uh, increasing the addressable market uh, in uh, healthcare. That will go on as it is.
Sure, uh, my last question is on the M&A uh, strategy which Dabur has. So clearly when I see uh, Marico, uh, HUL, ITC, etc., uh, they have been quite more aggressive on the D2C front in terms of acquisition last two, three years in the force and uh, personal care uh, portfolio. Uh, Dabur obviously uh, has done the uh, Bacha acquisition, so wanted to understand on D2C, uh, D2C acquisition, what is your thought process? And second, in terms of Bacha, uh, what is the interplay between Bacha and uh, Homemade? Homemade has done well, but are there any synergy benefits which you are working on uh, between both the portfolio uh, in terms of either distribution team or in terms of brand architecture, etc.? Uh, because now both are fairly adjacent to each other for the customer. Absolutely. So, uh, Abneesh, what we are doing, we've got uh, money sitting in a balance sheet for acquisition purposes. We are continuously scouting on targets for D2C also. Now, uh, and uh, if we come across a company which is synergistic to us in the healthcare play or the personal care play or the skin care Ayurvedic play, we will evaluate them. And uh, if it uh, seems financially worthwhile, we will acquire the company. The last thing we want to do is acquire a dilutive brand which further takes down our EBITDA margin. That's why uh, proper due diligence has to happen before we actually acquire a brand. But money is there in the balance sheet to acquire a D2C brand also, which could be a premium play for strengthening our urban business. That's one. The second part of your question on Bacha and uh, Homemade is concerned. Both Homemade and Bacha are doing well. Bacha is grown by 23%, also impacted by a lot of inflation of prices. This data. Homemade brand is uh, growing at around 33-34%. Homemade is restricted to the northern side of the country where Dabur is very strong and Bacha is today restricted to western side. We are cross-pollinating the portfolio from Bacha to Homemade, Homemade to Bacha definitely. In terms of distribution, we are leveraging the Bacha distribution in the west for Homemade and we are leveraging the Dabur distribution for Bacha in the north. Still, we have not started going forward in the next quarters. We will start uh, pollinating Bacha to our distributors in the uh, western region to start with, western and southern region to start with before we move to north. This is what the playbook was in the beginning and we are sticking to our strategy what we had planned out to be. But uh, both of them are uh, running at a rate of 500 crores going forward next year. Next year we will be looking at a food portfolio totally 500 crores. So we will be exiting at around 450 and with next year, I think the target will be 500 crores for a food portfolio. Okay. okay, thanks. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Avi Mehta from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Hi, Mohit. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. I wanted to kind of just understand the oral care uh, positioning a little better. You know, do you See the need to extend beyond the naturals positioning to ensure that the growth divergence versus the industry sustains at the earlier highs. And if yes, what steps are we taking for the same? Yeah, are we not really? We want to stick to our core and our core capability as far as oral care is concerned. I think natural is our core and we will stick to the natural portfolio and we will not differ from the natural portfolio. If you look at the current numbers which have come from Canta, we see penetration of natural category is moved up from 30% to 31. 200 basis point of improvement is there in the growth as far as the natural category is concerned. Within the natural, overall, we've been uh, successful in taking business from the non-natural uh, to the natural. The category has grown in volume by around 2.5%. Uh, we have grown by around 9%. As compared to our number one competitor who's grown by 7%, we have taken share from them and uh, we are consistently taking share. 50 basis point gain is uh, happened in Daba Red. Even Lal Dantamanjan on back of rural recoveries are also done very well. Daba Herbal toothpaste has some teething problems in terms of stock out, but that also we are correcting uh, going forward. But in south of India, it's doing well. We've launched our Daba uh, Bay Fresh Gel which you can say is a uh, kind of a non-natural or sla slash and natural gel entry, which is targeting youngsters and teenagers, and the positioning is more on fresh breath, which is really not on health, but it is an extension of our red franchise 
into a jail. We've lost it. We've roped in Karthik Aryan as a celebrity for that. We've already got a turnover of around uh, four to five crore. We've lost it in the end of June. And I think for the full year, we'll be targeting a number of around 15 to 16 crores coming out of our uh, Bay Fresh jail. Our earlier jail franchise has also grown by more than around 25% in the last quarter. So jail was an area where which was absent in our portfolio, which we have kind of plucked. Okay, okay. Just a follow-up, in your opinion, this 31% natural share in oral care, where do you see it trending probably two years or three years ahead? I don't know two years, three years, but definitely a little longest term, I think five to six years, uh, I think the whole category 50% should become natural. And Dabar will consistently keep taking share uh, from the market leader. Got it, got it, perfect. And the second bit was essentially on the... Sorry. Yeah, because Sorry. the price points because the price points are similar, there is no difference between a price point. This is a basically a value added to space. Like you have a value added hair oil, this is a value added to space, calcium carbonate base, and we are giving uh, more added ingredients and promising benefits like cavity protection, like sensitivity, etc. But more through natural means rather than through cosmetic and chemical means. Really clear. Thank, thanks, Mohit. Thanks a lot for that. The second bit was essentially on the margin. Now, given the first quarter performance where we've seen input cost kind of moderating, demand strength kind of reflecting in this margin performance, would you want to revisit your guidance uh, for FY24 of 19 to 19 and a half? Or how would you kind of, if you could share your comments on that, please? Inflation is concerned, we are witnessing uh, inflation moderating across our categories, but the mix of inflation is also changing towards food. We've seen food basket inflation around 11%, while it's moderated in HPC and HC in healthcare, but uh, food basket we've seen inflation with spices, inflation being around 19% are uh, concentrate, uh, food concentrate, uh, also we've seen inflation. Now the monsoons are going to hit. I don't know how inflation will pan out in the immediate term. But consistently, overall, on the hydrocarbon link, which is our bigger basket of raw material and packaging material, there we have seen deflation. And that deflation should continue for next quarters to come. And there will be a margin upside. We have seen the 75 basis point of improvement in our gross margin, which we've invested into media. That will continue to do. If the gross margin upside is higher, then that will flow into our operating margin. But we keep a guidance of uh, the same similar band. Till the time we uh, cover up our media investments to a tune of around uh, 8 to 9 percent of the overall business should be media for us. Till the time money will keep going into media because we feel long term we have to invest in media and not really, uh, you know, look at a very short term approach of uh, giving it to margins and less to media and starving the brands. No, got it. Uh, okay. Uh, just the last bit more. Sorry, sorry, Mohit, you saying? Just the last bit, Mohit, was on this recent news that came in about the honey. If there's anything that you would like to comment on that, uh, which is coming today, just that's the last bit on my end. That's all for me. Yeah. So I know that uh, these this news is keep coming in and we keep uh, giving statements. And one more statement I will give. We stand by the purity of Dabar honey. Our every single batch of Dabar honey is dispatched from a factory and it complies with all FSSAI parameters, which is the regular body, regulatory body in India. We export to almost many countries and everywhere we follow the regulations of the regulatory body there. Most of the factories where we produce our honey, they are all F F US FDA certified facilities and no question of any impurity. I think uh, it's our... Uh, foremost duty and the Dabur brand stands for quality and trust in the consumer's mind and we don't want to breach that. That's our foremost priority to do. So no question of anything. So every batch is tested as it exits the factory and that batch is tested for all around 65 parameters of FSSAI and also beyond that which includes uh, HMF also which has been questioned. Recently a Dabur honey uh, has been uh, granted an EGMA special certification post inspections and proper due diligence by authorities. This study which has actually happened is uh, evidently a couple of hours before our uh, 
quarterly uh, business result announcement is definitely motivated to align the image of the market leader last time also when the controversy happened with csc uh, report we emerged much stronger we gained around uh, 500 basis points of market share since then and i'm sure even after this controversy will emerge out to be much more stronger and uh, as a business uh, we uh, do not pay any heed to uh, such studies which keep happening and these are uh, some tactics by uh, some companies to malign our image and take shares to ulterior motives but uh, we do not want to pay any heed to that and continue with our business as usual no perfect perfect the 500 bit i mean the margin market share gain which we saw last time is a very clear kind of indication of that should thank you very much that's all from my okay thank you The next question is on the line of Arnab Mitra from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Mohit. Uh, my first question was on uh, the gross margin. So, while your consolidated gross margin has moved up, uh, what I was noticing is the India gross margin has been kind of flattish for the last three quarters. Uh, while we have seen input cost deflation and a lot of the other companies have seen strong expansion, is it something that is going to come in with a lag, or uh, are there certain pockets? Uh, where the inflation is very high for you, which is why the India GM is not moving up that much sequentially. So, but India, Arnab, India gross margins have also improved by uh, 80 bits, uh, 80 bits in the quarter year on year. So, and uh, you know, so therefore, uh, the benefits of deflation in healthcare and HPC businesses are flowing on into uh, business. So that's uh, true. Correct. So it's actually improving. Yeah, so 80 basis points is an improvement. What other maybe you are uh, reflecting on is other companies maybe have shown 190 and we are actually 80. One of the issue here is in food we have an inflation of around 11 percent, which is hitting us in fruit concentrates and uh, fruit food as a segment is very salient in our summer months, which is our first quarter. So 25 percent of our business is coming from. summer centric food portfolio where we have seen inflation as we move into quarter 2 and quarter 3 hpc and ft portfolio will become even more salient and therefore gross margin upside will be even better in uh, those two quarters to your point also so and in uh, hpc portfolio where raw material is essentially sles uh, and uh, hydrocarbon linked llp linked there we have not seen very high deflation yet with because of the strategic inventories that we will be carrying as we exhaust the inventory and we uh, move into the regular purchases we will see gross margin upside happening there also so definitely sequentially there has been a gross margin improvement quarter on quarter and we will continue to see that for next uh, two to three quarters yes okay understood that uh, thank thanks for that Uh, my second question was on beverages. So clearly, this quarter there was an impact of the summer uh, season. Uh, just wanted to get your sense on how you see the full year now, uh, because you do have a very high base for 2Q. Also, I think there was a timing with the festive season. Uh, uh, how do you see the full year growth for beverages uh, overall, and anything on the new initiatives on beverages, uh, especially food drinks, uh, in terms of how you want to scale it up this year? Yeah, so beverage was muted on account of season, and we could not help in the season. If you see most of the beverage companies, as per the Vizom data, which was released, they're all down by around 25%. As compared to they down by 25%, uh, Dabur Beverage portfolio is only down by it's almost flat. They are declined by around 1.6% uh, in uh, beverages, whereas in terms of transactions, we've actually grown. By around uh, four to five percent in terms of transactions. Transaction is number of reaches that you are selling in the market on back of the drinks that we guys introduced. So that is uh, just been introduced. So overall beverages will be muted through the quarter because main season was uh, damper. But I don't know how the season will pan out to be next year going forward. But uh, I think uh, it will be muted for the full year beverages, which will be in a way a positive as far as our margins are concerned. in the current year because the salient of beverages uh, if it's low then the margins become positive for us okay i'm okay thanks for that and my uh, last question was an international business uh, you had those distribution issues uh, wanted to know does this quarter fully reflect that the issues are behind and you or, or there is um, 
some restocking that you would expect going ahead uh, as the distribution changes fully kind of kick in into those markets. Yeah, international business, we've done the changes in distribution uh, last year and therefore that got reflected in the first quarter. In first quarter, we lost some sales on account of change of distributor. Next quarter should be a full-blown quarter with the distribution changes getting ironed out. For the full year, uh, we can uh, guide for a good double-digit growth in international business. Uh, constant currency, obviously, we have grown by 20% and will continue to grow like that in constant currency in international business. But currency depreciation impacts us. But even in Indian currency, we will have a double-digit growth as far as international business is concerned in the full year. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mohit. That's it from my side. All the best. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Percy from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, just some comments from you on uh, the hair oil segment. Uh, it's grown at uh, 10% uh, this quarter, and your other large competitor uh, basically has seen a flat kind of a number. So just wanted to understand what has led to this difference in performance. Yeah, so Percy, we guys have grown by around 200 basis points. Ever highest market share of 17.4 we've registered in hair oil. So I think our Amla portfolio, which is following a strategy of the core brand strengthening and through flanker brand, I think all our brands have done well, including Amla core. I think execution in the market has been uh, absolutely uh, great. Uh, by the team and we've been gaining share in segment after segment. So packed price architecture and uh, MSL which is must stock list adherence is actually uh, reaping results in the marketplace uh, for us and shelf shares going up, distributions are going up, all end. I think uh, execution has been great. So and our strategy is actually working for us which took us time. Uh, because in the 10 rupee, 20 rupee, we were losing shares to our competitor, but I think that they've come back and kind of anchored it uh, well. Got it, got it. Uh, secondly, on margin, uh, just continuing from uh, Arnab's question, uh, uh, how do you see it uh, playing out? You said basically you had some uh, higher priced inventory. Now that will get run through. Uh, uh, do you think that... Uh, uh, you will sort of end the year at the higher end of your guidance of 19 to 20? So I never give a guidance of 19 to 20. So, but, uh, yeah, higher end of the guidance, yes. Uh, so definitely. So I think it will take us uh, another year. I don't know how the inflation pans out to be, but it all depends upon inflation. But we've already taken price increases in last year to manage inflation. And all the follow-through impact of the price increases should happen in the current year if inflation is really benign and it leads to deflation, which is not the case right now. It's the 0.5 inflation still. If inflation becomes deflation, yeah, we could uh, positively surprise you at the end of the year. But I can't give you that kind of a guidance at the moment. We should remain the band that we talked about earlier. Sure, sure. And also, you know, like in India... While in India, we will see some bit of deflation, but also in international market, the currency devaluations are still playing a role. So it's very difficult to say at this point of time, you know, will we cross 20% or not. But uh, yes, we would definitely improve versus last year. That is the intent. But whatever is the upside in gross margin, we will want to plow it back uh, to the media spend and generate demand for the future. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's all for me. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shirish Pardeshi from Centrum. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Just to start with, uh, uh, I think we have seen a uh, base effect now playing out in the healthcare. So would you be help help us uh, to give some thoughts how we should look at quarter two, quarter three onwards? Because I, I, I would assume now inventory also would have been uh, depleted uh, very sharply. Uh, Shirish, as far as inventory is concerned, uh, I don't know if inventory is depleted or not, but I can tell you a couple of examples that we were carrying a lot of inventory 
in e-commerce for healthcare and uh, that inventory is getting depleted as we speak and Chavantra's growth is still not back on track and Chavantra's CAGR continues to be at 11% but still Chavantra is not growing as we would expect although it's a lower base for Chavantra non season for Chavantra but still the decline in Chavantra is to a tune of around uh, uh, around uh, 9% or so but uh, this is not the season. In the season, we expect uh, Chavan Pash to actually grow. It's not a depleted inventory. That's the point I'm trying to illustrate. It's a normal course, par for the course of inventory in healthcare. But that said, healthcare should trend at a double-digit growth. A high single to a double-digit growth is what we should see in healthcare going forward. All verticals of healthcare should uh, have a price increase element that we had taken last year and uh, backed by... Uh, mid single uh, volume growth and we should see a double digit growth in healthcare going forward with uh, baby care actually leading the pack and uh, honey has been doing well I don't know but for the recent controversy uh, it's, uh, I don't think it should impact the business uh, much but honey continues to do very well for us in the season glucose was impacted because it's a summer centric portfolio next season going forward when we do the loading in quarter four for quarter one, I think that should be better. Uh, so healthcare uh, should uh, give us a high single to a low double digit growth uh, for a full year. Yes, you're right. The abnormal places have even down. Business will now grow on a uh, normal trajectory. That's what I was expecting. Um, okay. Uh, my second question is on the hair oil. Uh, from the... Uh, uh, from the uh, presentation, I can make out that we have launched a Dabar uh, Cool King. Uh, I think uh, that's gone into the market. So uh, can, you, can you share some initial feedback, how this product has done well, which are the markets you're seeing the pickup, or any color on that? We launched it in the month of May, actually, five of the May. It's been two months uh, of implementation in the marketplace, May and June. The initial response of the product has been very positive. The advertising that we released has been received very well with the consumers, and we've gained 15% relative market share to market competitor, a market lead player in whichever towns and uh, markets that we have launched. We have launched it in UP, we've launched it in North, and we've launched it in Bihar. These are the parts that are most impacted by the summers, and that's where the cooling oil grows, in thousand crore category, uh, and uh, dominated by a single monopoly player. We've made multiple attempts in the past, all not very successful. Again, we tried to enter because we're trying to plug all the gaps of hair oil. Initial feedback is very positive, but uh, Shirish, we'll have to come back again next year and make a full hearted because the summer was muted this time. So, But that said, the product response and the repeat purchase in the range of around 25 to 30%, which is very encouraging. Uh, the reason why I'm asking this question because uh, similarly, uh, even Marico and uh, Bajaj Consumer is also made inroads in the cooling segment. So I was saying, is the growth rates are so impressive that uh, uh, that's why everybody's trying to get into the footing? Uh, not really. I think it's a plugging of gap uh, of the portfolio and uh, each competitor. I don't know. I can't tell about themselves. As far as we are concerned, we see this is a definite gap in our portfolio. So we want to plug the gap wherever we have a right to win. And we have a proposition which is very unique, which has been introduced with a chill tube in it. First time there's a tube in a bottle which has got camphor crystals in it, which provides cooling uh, and perpetual cooling. No other player in the market has got this kind of a proposition. So on back of this proposition and Dabar having a right to win in the hair oil market, we feel we have good chances of success here. And that's why we are kind of pushing it. And this is in line with our uh, Dabar Amla big strong brands and plugging the gaps in all the portfolios. So that's what uh, we are trying to do. Okay. Uh, my next question is on the uh, NPD funnel. I think last 15 months we have tried various products, uh, starting from the baby care range, we have drawn some dry fruits, we have gone into the mustard oil, edible oil, and then uh, uh, and now when we look back, what is the thing which is working or what is promising, and maybe if you can guide over next one year, what is your NPD funnel, I mean not the product, but what is your target in terms of contribution to sales? 
See, we've always maintained that uh, our innovation as a percentage to overall business should be in the range of around 3 to 4 percent, and that's what happened in the current quarter also. Our total NPD to total revenue is around 3 percent of the business across all verticals, and that's what we want to maintain. So, but for emerging channels like e-commerce, where the NPD to the business revenue is in the range of around 10 percent or so, because that's an incubating funnel for us. And as we keep incubating and uh, doing proof of concept checks, once it's successful, then we roll it out to MT and e-commerce. That's our playbook that's been established very well. In terms of successes, baby care is a definite success in healthcare. I'll now talk about healthcare to you. Baby care is definite success. Uh, we hit a turnover of, of exit of around 20 crore. Now we are making it mainstream. This year target is around 50 crore. Is what we are doing. Cool King, we've already introduced. We've done a 6 crore of revenue number. It's a seasonal brand, so next we'll follow. Bay Fresh Gel, we've already launched in the marketplace, an entry into our gel category. Uh, Odomos brand will increase the addressable market, and we are launching an Odomos LVP going forward. And uh, the edible oil portfolio, the entire edible oil, mustard oil, sesame oil, and heart oil that we have got, that will stay on e-commerce for us, and it's doing very well. It's actually, we are constraining supply of the edible oil portfolio in the marketplace uh, deliberately because it's a contingency portfolio kept for us in case of any frying time. So that's uh, there. Our coconut water continues to do well. Real Fizz, as you know, has uh, done very well. 200 crores of drinks franchise we have already created. Our Dabur key, as we speak, is 10 crore in exit. It's again, we can open floodgates, but we are deliberately keeping it uh, restricted. Ajmola extensions of Limcola, Chatkola, now Pantola being launched are doing very well and they are contributing to around 10% of the overall Ajmola business. Ajmola has grown by around 15% and 10% of the turnover is coming from innovations over there. RT, our entry into Chai was the attempt that we did and I think this year we have taken a turnover of 10 to 11 crores coming from our uh, Ayurvedic tea. Our health juices has grown by around 20% in the current year. So overall, around 3 to 4% of our business should continue to come from our innovations, which are future pillars of growth going forward in the future for us. And it's lying with our increasing our addressable market under the guardrails of our power brands, which we'll keep strengthening, which are the core of the business contributing to around 70-80%. That's helpful, uh, uh, Mohit. So just one follow-up here. Uh, Though it is it is heartening to know that you have a very strong NPD funnel, but uh, how do you manage this complexity running these all businesses, right from supply chain to manufacturing to the front end and at the distributor level? Yeah, so I think it's not very complex because I told you it's done within the guardrails of the power brand architecture. Now to tell you a guardrail of a power brand, I'll illustrate you with an example. Uh, Hajmola is a brand which has got three variants. I'm introducing two more variants. It runs on the same line, it runs on the same bottle, only the color of the cap is different and the laminate is different. And the same supply chain handles it, same distribution handles it, same distributor handling it. So I think it doesn't cost us much. The new variants bring in more vibrancy and a better incremental business. Similarly, a real brand, a real brand is now available in a pet bottle. Earlier, only a Tetra Pak was going. Now a pet bottle is also made available. Earlier, five variants were going. Now, seven variants are going. The batches become multiple, but that complexity we are geared to manage. And uh, it is, and we have learned it to our international business also, where the population is lesser and the runs are smaller and changes in the line can frequently happen with efficiency and economy. So that we have learned over a period of time. So I don't think there's too much of complexity as far as the... Hair oil is concerned, again, similar bottles, similar there is economies which are there. It gives more news to the salesman to sell and better throughput at the outlet uh, is being promised. So I don't think there's too much of complexity being uh, added here. Rahul, you want to add something? Rahul, we happen to have a privilege of having Rahul along with us. Maybe if he wants to add something. So, uh, for uh, uh, Shirish, for many innovations, we adopt the principle of open innovation wherein we are not only uh, deploying our own capability, but we, we are taking help of a lot of third-party manufacturing already available, which are having the same kind of format already being produced. So many of these innovations are not creating complexity in our manufacturing setup. 
and uh, they are very fast to do and that is the reason why we are able to roll out innovation in such a faster way. Uh, I got that, Rahul. Uh, uh, that's really helpful. But just wanted to check at the front end when your distribution is common uh, length. So in that, how the distributor is doing justice selling all these products, unless it is channel specific. Yeah. So, Shri channel wise, as far as I'll give you a little more granular answer. Uh, so, e-commerce is a common channel. They are open to innovation, so there's no pressure there. So, is the case with modern trade. We furnish them directly. Distributor interface in 80% of our modern trades is not there. Now coming to GT, which is 70% of the business complexity arises there. There we are planning to increase our feet on speed. A, we are appointing more number of sub stockists and more number of yodhas that you know. As far as, and uh, in uh, GT, we have three separate verticals, healthcare distributor, uh, HPC distributor, and foods distributor separate. And with a common distributor, we are trying to segregate lines also. And depending upon the threshold of turnover, we are separating HPC into HPC1 and HPC2 also and adding more free on speed in sales and marketing costs to ensure that uh, delivery and execution happens of the NPDs that we introduce. Wonderful. Thank you, uh, Mohit, and all the best. Thank you, Sikshya. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prakash Kapadia from Anivet Portfolio Managers. Please go ahead. Um, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Two questions from my end. You know, what could be the current sales mix of OTC and ethicals? And, you know, you obviously talked about new initiatives in the ethical piece. And, you know, going forward as we are, you know, trying to scale both, could you give us some sense on margins? Are margins similar or higher? between OTC and ethicals, and secondly, on the beverage business, you know, what happens when there is, you know, unseasonal rains or delayed summer? Does growth happen in the balance of the year or on an exit full year basis? Is it fair to say growth remains muted or flattish or festive season can drive growth for beverages? All right. So first part of your question. OTC and ethical, almost 50-50% of the total turnover that we have, and margin profiles are also pretty similar because most of the ethical portfolio is the one once it crosses the threshold level of turnover moves to OTC for us. So there is no margin profile difference between OTC and ethical, and it's almost 50-50% of uh, our portfolio. Like uh, Haj Mola, when it was a classical or ethical product, it was, used to be called Shuddha Vazir Churan. And then we nomenclatured it as Ajmola and we are calling it OTC now. So that is how we change it. So ethical and OTC is a different life cycle stage. In the previous cycle of the life cycle, it is called ethical. Then it becomes a branded ethical. Then it becomes a OTC for us. So that's a life cycle stage depending upon the turnover. For, uh, yeah, like uh, uh, Stresscom is a branded ethical, which is called a Stresscom, but the active ingredient over there is ashwagandha. So when it is ethical, it is called ashwagandha. When it moves to branded ethical, it's called stress form. When it uh, reaches a 5 crore turnover, it becomes an OTC for us. That is how we look at the life cycle stage management for our ethical to branded ethical to OTC to FMHG business also. So that's the way our healthcare is again a playbook very well established in Dabar over years. And we stick to that. And the margins are pretty similar, which are equitative to the overall margins of the company, both from a gross margin perspective and from a net margin perspective. And the requirement of advertising is so much more lower. With establishing this advocacy vertical, we will be able to now do more advocacy and reduce more uh, advertising, which is where we have more attrition of the consumers. Again, we have to advertise. Again, lasting happens. But the doctor, doctor remains the same along the life cycle of the product and therefore requirement. That's why pharma margins are much higher as compared to a OTC or a FMHG uh, margin for you. Second part of your question is beverages. Now, the season has impacted uh, beverages on account of summer being lower and 30% uh, of the consumption of beverages out of home uh, for us. Out of home consumption, when the rains are there, people don't move out and people don't move out. The eating and drinking outlets don't have that kind of a throughput and they are not able to sell. That's why the portfolio gets impacted. If rains are not there and the marriage season is great, uh, which is what we think it should be, or Diwali season is great, if the 
uh, rain don't uh, play a damper or a spoil sport, then I think that season should not get impacted by beverages. But because the season is so heavy and it contributes to around uh, 30-40% of the total consumption for the whole year, a little impact for the full year business definitely happens. Understood, Moet. Very clear. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Latika Chopra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question was on, you know, your expectations on volume growth progression uh, for the rest of the year. You know, we start lapping even a lower base as we come into uh, the next few quarters. And depending on the rural recovery comments that I heard, uh, do you anticipate uh, volume growth trends to gradually move to mid to maybe even high single-digit volume growth as you cross the year? Yeah, Latika, absolutely. I think uh, rightly uh, said. So if you look at now giving a little uh, better answer for you to understand it, if you look at the volume growth across our verticals, our volume growth in beverage has been very muted because beverage season wasn't in favor. So volume growth was negative, which dragged the overall volume growth of the company down. If you look at the healthcare volume growth, our healthcare volume growth, while there was a 6-7% of price increase in fact, the overall business has grown by 12%. There's a 6-7% of a volume growth in our healthcare business. In HPC business, where the price increase wasn't very high, our volume growth has been in the range of around 7-8%. And going forward, this should be the volume growth going forward. So mid-single to high-single volume growth going forward. And if beverage portfolio... Uh, a little bit negative, but definitely mid-single volume growth should be there in the business. So exports this time, the volume growth is 6% for us in the first quarter. And uh, yeah, and we will have to do, and uh, with the rural recovery happening, as we uh, see, uh, the rural has grown by 4%, we've grown by 8%, volume growth in uh, rural this time for the category is around 7.5%, and back of all this, we should see a definite volume uptick happening in the business. And we are always monitoring our volume market shares. So for us to grow ahead of the category, the volume growth should be ahead of a mid-single also. For us to gain market shares across 90% of the portfolio that we have. Sure. And uh, my second question was, uh, you know, on beverages, sorry uh, to check on this again, but, you know, your... For earlier comments during the call suggested that a full year for beverages, do you expect a muted full year? Uh, I understand the first quarter was sluggish, which is about 30 to 40 percent of the business. But for the remaining quarters, uh, are you okay if we build in some growth, or are you seeing any any uh, you know other challenges here? You know, for high base or anything like that. We have taken a target of around 8% uh, 8 to 9% growth on a high base of 40% uh, of last year. So we are looking at that target for us. The season now played havoc for us, but the targeted growth is definitely that. And we see the month of July, 22 days out of total 30 days in July was impacted because of rain. So this is an extraordinary event that we are seeing, which wasn't planned earlier. So I can't tell you uh, guidance going forward for beverages because it is so much season driven for us. So that is what. Uh, but we are, we had targeted a target of around 8% and uh, we want to inch up to that particular target and all the incentives of the entire team, Salesforce and backend is linked to that particular target, Latika. Yeah. And, and the last one was uh, just to get a sense of what to taste uh, revenue and volume growth uh, for the quarter, and also to comment on your KPEX plans, FY24, FY25. Uh, that's all for me. Yeah, so easier uh, question first. The total cap uh, capex is in the range of around 400, 450 crores for the current year, and that's what in the current quarter we've done 160 crore of capex. So full year we should be doing around 400, 450 crores of uh, capex. Now, the second part of your question in terms of oral care. Oral care, the volume growth of the category is 2.5. We've done a 
volume growth of uh, roughly around 8% uh, in uh, oral care with Dabur Red as a flagship gaining 50 basis point market share. The category of natural, which is 30% was 30%, now has become 31%. We've launched gel also in the market. So I think we should definitely have a double-digit uh, growth as far as oral care driven by volume growth uh, for us for the full year in oral care. I think we are doing well in oral care. I don't see a reason why we should not uh, perform well here. The business is on track and uh, doing well for us. Sure. Thank you so much. And another point I just want to add, I missed out. Last year, we had issues with Reliance because one of the SQs that we had introduced in Reliance was undercutting into the GT market, which we cut back supplies. But now that also relationship has been thawed and the business is back on track as far as modern trade is also concerned with Reliance. So that this also works in our favor. Right? That SQ is... Yeah, toothpaste. I'm talking, I'm talking about toothpaste. Yeah. And uh, like you know, we are already a number two uh, toothpaste uh, company in the country today and we've located uh, uh, the number two player and we've become the number two player even in toothpaste now. So Mohit, uh, if, uh, if uh, my understanding is right, this issue was there in Q4, right? So does it mean that Q1 was a bit of, uh, you know, that issue res resolution with Reliance and do you think this 8% volume growth kind of moderates a bit in coming quarters? Sorry, Latika, I didn't quite get your question. So I'm, I'm just trying to understand if this uh, you know, uh, issue with Reliance is resolved in Q1. And uh, do you think this 8% volume growth kind of moderates a bit uh, you know, in the coming quarters? It's the other way around. It was an issue in the last quarter. We have uh, In the previous fiscal year, we have corrected that problem in the quarter one and going forward, the business should trend well, even in Reliance I'm saying, because last year, while in GT we kept gaining share, but in Reliance as a modern trade in single account, we lost some market share. So that relationship on oral care category manager is back on track and we should start gaining shares back in oral care is what I'm saying. Okay, all right, I, I hear you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sheila Rati from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, Mohit, my first question was uh, with respect to the rural recovery. Uh, you seem to be sounding much more confident on rural recovery, uh, but we are getting very mixed signals from uh, most other management on rural side. So what has changed for us and how – and you talked about the bit single-digit growth uh, at the aggregate level on the volume side. Uh, but, uh, you know, what is it that has specifically changed for us on the uh, rural side and any specific markets which you would like to talk about? Uh, the way rural was, I'm looking at the market indicators in FMCG volume. Rural used to be minus 5 in uh, quarter 4. Uh, of uh, 22, from minus 5 volume, it became to minus 2, then to minus 3, minus uh, 3, then plus 0.3, and now plus 4. So definitely these are trends of almost a recovery that one is actually seeing if one, one plots a graph. And uh, the rains have been near normal. And uh, if you read the news article, etc., you find that Rabi harvest was impacted by monsoon, but Kharif, uh, uh, you know, sowing has been great. I think this harvest would only happen in uh, the winter season to come, and there'll be more money in the hands of the consumers. And uh, a wage rate in Mandrega has also been taken up to around 10%. MSP rates have also gone up. This will increase the money in the hands of the rural consumer. And while the category is growing at 4%, we have grown by 8%. Uh, in rural, so that is telling us that uh, money is uh, back in rural and moreover, price increases have come down now and as we move into next quarter, the price increases will go down and volume growth will actually start. When the inflation was high, price increases were high, it was pinching on the rural consumer and therefore their propensity to spend was actually impacted, but going forward, 
I think things will only move back. Plus, election year is coming, so government will also invest more money in uh, rural, especially in the Hindi heartland, and business should be back. So, one of some of the anecdotal examples is north. North is very high salient for us. It got impacted by monsoon heavily, but the FMCG market uh, was down there. But we have seen where we are very salient with UP, MP, Bihar, and uh, Northern Belt also. We've seen our business growing by around 6 7 percent in the GT also, despite our beverages not firing. So, which was top stockist network is kind of, uh, uh, you know, yielded results for us uh, in the north. And that is telling me, giving me confidence that rural uh, should be doing well for us going forward. And I don't see a reason why rural should not. Because if you look at around, uh, uh, you know, if I look at quarter four of financial year 21, Rural was always the one which was leading the growth and urban was following. Now both urban and rural are kind of growing well. So I think rural we should keep inching up and the gap between urban and rural should keep narrowing and uh, rural should fire. So, but you know how monsoon and the climate change is impacting the world. I don't know how things will be, but I just uh, hope that rural fires and that augurs well for us. We are highly salient. Uh, in rural with 45 to 50 percent of our business coming out of rural. And any early signs of upgrading, you know, because last year we were seeing a lot of downgrading. So in any categories where we have seen a switch? Uh, not really. We've not seen any signs of upgrading. But that said, the price increase in fact has kind of uh, moderated now. So now it's an even keel. The shock of price increase is now in the base. And uh, that is a kind of upgrade. So consumer has gotten used to it, and now they are uh, buying products. So upgrading in the sense that a 8 ml sachet has become a 6 ml sachet, and that's now in the base. So that is kind of an upgrade in a sense that you may take it like that. A lot of bridge packs which have been launched in the market that already got structured or penciled in the bases now. So that is uh, a par for the course going forward, yes. Thank you. I just one more question, and I'm not sure whether there will be an answer here. But uh, from from a portfolio perspective, uh, what would be the share of brands uh, which would be say less than 50 crores for us? You know, you talked about baby products, uh, where we are very excited about it's at 20 crores. But do we have a number here? That is, what percentage of our portfolio would be uh, less than 50 crores overall portfolio? I think we have the number, but we can get back to you, we'll get back to you with the exact detail. Yeah, I'll get back to you, but I think broadly to tell you, 75% of the portfolio is power brand, power brand portfolio. And none of our power brand is below 50 crores. So all are uh, in the range, uh, with the exception of Pudin Hara, which is in the range of around 60, 70 crores. Rest, all are above 100 crore portfolio. So 75%, so the rest is 25% of the portfolio out of which there will be many of them which are more than 100 crores but not a power of not a part of power brand architecture so definitely it will be below around uh, uh, 20 crores if you ask me number of brands so number of brands will be more than 20 because dabar has so many brands but in terms of percentage turnover coming from less than uh, 100 uh, 50 crore brands should be yeah, around uh, 10, 15, 10, 15 percent. Understood. Thank you. I thank hope I would confuse you more. No, no, this is very clear. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Jiva. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vishal Punmaya from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just wanted to understand uh, our OTC growth a little better. Uh, so we had a uh, impact in our base quarter because of the COVID-related portfolio. Uh, but when I look at the CAGR performance, it looks like the OTC portfolio has picked up quite well and uh, is reporting a strong growth, even on a CAGR basis. So what is helping this growth in OTC portfolio? And also, uh, if you could help with the OTC revenue decline in the base quarter. Uh, that's, uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Yeah. 
So I think our OTC has got subparts to it. The first part is the digestive part of the portfolio, which is Hardwola is a lead brand there. That has grown by around 15%, and that is growing on back of a lot of innovation that we've done in Hardwola. As I told you, Chatkola, Limkola, and now Fantola coming in, I think they should be the ones which should be driving the growth. Our Pudinara portfolio has been a little muted in OTC because of the season. Pudinara is more summer-centric portfolio that got impacted. That's not done well. Our Lal Sale, which is a baby care brand, that has uh, done exceedingly well, growing by around 15 to 16 percent, and uh, that is doing well on back of market share gains that we've gained market shares in the market from Johnson and Johnson, which is a market lead player. The fourth power brand is Honeyters, which is cup and cold. That, on a higher base, has still grown on by 30 percent odd, and it is continuously taking share from other competitors like Benadryl and Torex, etc. Then, and the four-year CAGR is around 22 percent for a Honeyters. So, it's year on year we are taking share from the market lead player and uh, growing because the size of the market is very big and we still in terms of market share are sub 10% in Honeyters brand. So there's a huge uh, headroom for uh, growth here. The fifth brand is Shilajit. Shilajit is, grown, is growing at 20% four year CAGR for us. That is a men's wellness, that is a category is actually growing very well. Even Dabur has juices. And what was the decline in the base quarter for OTC? No, no, there was no decline in the base quarter. It's coming on a high base. In the base quarter, the growth was in the range of... Uh, Ankush? Let's check. Sir. We, will, we can just check. Yeah, it's check. Because OTC and ethicals together grew by 15%. No, it might be because of COVID. We can come back to you, Vishal. We don't have the data readily available, but one can come back to you on the base number. Sure, sure. No issues. Thank you. Thank you very much, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that would be our last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Gagan Alawalia for closing comments. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Aman. Thank you for everyone for your participation in this conference call. The webcast, audio recording, and transcript of this call will be available on our website. Thank you, and have a nice evening ahead. Thank you very much. Ladies and